Hello and welcome to Lansdowne's online evening message for the 11th of December 2022. I'll be preaching on this text at our carol service on the evening of the 11th, so it's not a, a, a full-blown exposition of the passage, rather it is a reflection on the, on the text and an invitation to come to the light of Jesus Christ. If you watch the morning message for the 11th of December, that was on Isaiah 9, 2 to 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. We look there at the image of light and darkness and Jesus as a light who brings light and transformation to our lives. We live in a world of darkness. We need him. We need to be saved. And this message is similar, but looking at it from a different passage of scripture from John 1, 1 to 5, looking especially at verses 4 and 5. As we approach Christmas, you might be wondering what you're going to get or what you need. For many of us this Christmas, certainly in the United Kingdom, will be quieter and uh, less expensive than previous years, hopefully. Most of us have had a huge increase in our utility bills, paying more for our energy, more to heat and light our homes, and there's less to spend on other things. But I wonder what you really need. You may like something, but what you really need. This passage tells us what we really need and actually that that need has been met through Jesus Christ. We need to come to him to receive it. So if you're, you've just stumbled upon this message, please don't turn off. Please listen to the end so you can find out what it is that is on offer to everyone who will come to Jesus Christ. And my prayer is that you would recognise your need for these things and that you would come and believe in him. Let's pray, first of all. Our Father, we pray you would speak to us through this passage and through the words that I'll be speaking to explain the passage. And I pray that they truly would be your word. And that whoever is watching or listening today will hear your voice and will find salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. I'm going to read five verses from John chapter one, the first five verses. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shined in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Now those of us in the United Kingdom, in this energy crisis where there are questions as to whether or not we will always have power during this winter period, we need to know where to find the light. So the power goes off. Where are you going to get your light from? Torch, your phone, candle. But you need to know where those things are so that you can turn the light on. Light is an essential need. If we had no light, we'd be dead. But even if we had some form of life, we would not be able to see. Light 
is essential. We all need light and life. No life, we're dead. No light, we cannot see. And this passage teaches us the source of life and light. We find in verse 4, it says, In him was life. Who is that in him? Well, I've read about him in the first three verses. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. So this in him that verse 4 is referring to is this person described as the Word, who was both with God and who was God. This is none other than Jesus Christ. As it says later on in John chapter 1 and verse 14, the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only son who came from the father, full of grace and truth. So the person who brings Life in him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. This is none other than Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, the creator of the universe. He is the source of life and light, those essential needs. We need to live and we need to see, and he brings both of those things. He is the source of both of those things. Now, if you've read the Bible at all, you will probably recognise something of this passage as being similar to Genesis chapter 1. Let me read to you Genesis chapter 1 and verses 1 to 3. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now, the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. So this word, verse 3 of John 1, through him all things were made. There was nothing made that had not been made by him, through him. He is there in Genesis 1. He is God, as John 1 says one says and he brings into the darkness of creation pre-creation he brings light and as you read through Genesis 1 he brings life animal life bird life plant life sea life and human life made in the image of God whether you believe in him or not he has given life and light Everyone lives and everyone sees because of him. He is a source of life and light. But there is more to living than physical life. And there is more to seeing than simply having the sun shine or the light be turned on in your home. We have a need for spiritual life and for spiritual light. And this is very much a theme in the Gospel of John. If you go through the Gospel of John and you read it, you'll find that light and life come up regularly. So, for example, John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. So there's a physical life that lasts till we die. There's eternal life also. And then John 3, 19. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Verse 20 and 21. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light 
so that it may be seen plainly that what they have done has been done in the sight of God. And then John 3, 36. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life, but whoever rejects the Son will not see life, for God's wrath remains on them. So without this more than physical life and more than physical light, we don't truly see and we don't truly live. We need, number one, to acknowledge that our physical existence and the light that's in this world by which we can see comes as a result of the creator, Jesus Christ. And let me just pause for a moment and encourage you to reflect how completely unique Christianity is. Every other way of living, be it religion or philosophy, is dependent upon following this teaching or teacher, their message, that's the heart of it. But in the Christian gospel, Jesus Christ, the creator of the universe, doesn't simply teach. He himself came, the eternal God and creator of the universe, came to live on this earth and to die and to rise again in order to save you and me. And bring you and me into true life and true light. That is far different from anything else. That's why the Christian way is the only way. There can be no other way to God because there's no other way of coming out of spiritual darkness and out of spiritual death without being saved by the creator of life and light. We need him. Our lives will end in death. We need something that's and someone that's stronger than death in order to rescue us. We need Life now of a quality beyond what simply physical life can offer. We need light to see by, to see and know and experience the God who made us and loves us so perfectly and so powerfully. We need spiritual life and spiritual light. And thirdly, and we can find this in John 1 and verse 5, we see the power of the light. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. This again points back to Genesis 1 verse 3. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. There wasn't a contest. There wasn't this pushback from the darkness against the light, and it was kind of a dusk, a half-light. There was light. And John here is using this as an illustration to show us that light wins. And to show us that this is exactly what Jesus did by coming to earth. By taking on the darkness. By taking on the darkness due to our sin. And dying the death that we deserve due to our sin. He taught, he lived, he died in our place, he died our death, he rose again from the dead and he defeated death. He overcame the attacks of Herod and the Pharisees, the stupidity of his own disciples, the devil himself and death, as I mentioned, could not defeat him. All the darkness in the world when he came could not defeat him and now he has risen from the dead and seated at God's right hand and he will come again and the darkness that exists now in this world will not win and it can never ever defeat him and so if we recognize and surely we must recognize that actually when I I look into my own heart, I see all is not well. There's darkness there. There are sinful attitudes and actions. There is a lack of understanding of the world around us and 
understanding of myself and why do I do these things and a knowledge of God. There's a darkness, there's a, a spiritual ignorance. Our bodies are decaying and we can't stop that from happening. No amount of creams or, or, or smoothies or superfoods will stop the day of our death. We are in need of life and light. And here John presents us as one who is powerful, all powerful, to give life and to bring light. We, that's why we need him. Look around at the world. This is the world around with the war and greed and destruction and death and sickness is all ultimately down to human sin and our rebellion against God and trying to run the world our own way and not his way. And we are in that world and our, uh, as it were, our, our inheritance is darkness and death until Jesus saves us. We need to come to him, that he would save us. We think we see. We've all got opinions about the world around us and what we should do to make things better. We've all got opinions about how other people should live, even about how we should live, and although we don't often meet our own expectations. We've all got those views. We think we can see, but actually it's like looking through a mirror covered or a window rather covered in grime you know if you're in, in a car and the windscreen's not been washed and all we just see is just this muck we can't see the road and especially when light is shining we just see this glare we don't really see out and see through because this grime is covering us and and, and Jesus comes to take away the grime that we can see clearly and for his light to shine upon us, to wash away our sins and to, and to come within to us, within us and, and give us new life from within. Uh, that, that, that right here now on earth, we have that spiritual light and that spiritual light. And then he continually shines his light upon us through his word and by his spirit, because he brings us into a, a relationship with him where we know him. We know him personally. He is our God who saves us, who loves us, who forgives us, who cares for us, who gives us an identity as his child, which surpasses our gender or our nationality or any other thing. Our identity as a child of God, we find peace with him. We find we have a joy that comes from him, even though there's still trouble in our lives. None of this is a promise of no more trouble. I'd be lying to say that to be a Christian is easy. It's not easy. You still have the same troubles as the people around you. You still have sickness, you still have financial worries, you still are getting older, you still have problems in your marriage or with your children. They, they don't go away, although we can bring them to the living God and pray about them, and he does intervene and change things. But we've still got those challenges in our lives. We still live in, live in a world where there's COVID-19 and other diseases, there's flu, and, and, and we've got the war in Ukraine, and we've got the, the financial crisis and all of these things. They're still all here, but you have a new joy in your heart. You have a new peace with God in your heart. You have an assurance that sins are forgiven. You have an assurance and knowledge that God loves you. You have, have an ability to start to live to please him and find that you actually enjoy him. You have a new hope in the middle of all the trouble in this world and even in your own life. Jesus offers you light and life and no trouble when you belong to him. No trouble can take those things away. The darkness has not overcome. But you need to come to him and believe in him. And leave your darkness behind, the things that you like to do and find you can't help doing sometimes that are keeping you from him. They're called sin. I want to live my way, not God's way. Our way leaves us in darkness. But coming to Jesus brings 
light. You can leave the darkness and the half-life behind and find new life in Jesus Christ. And he will shine his light upon you. He will save you, forgive you, and give you eternal life. So I urge you to come and put your trust in Jesus. You can do that simply by praying in your own words. Talk to him. He will hear you and tell him about the sin and darkness in your life. Be honest about it. Confess it to him. Ask him to save you because he died on the cross for you. Ask him to give you eternal life because he's risen from the dead. Ask him to, to shine his light and, and that you can follow him and know him and enjoy him because he is alive. He's praying for you. He wants, he, 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 he offers you a life with him forever. Desires you to come to know him. So come to him. You will be welcomed. And if you're not part of a church, then find a, a Bible-believing church in your area. Search for Bible-believing church or gospel church in your area and go and pay them a visit. Go and, and find out more about them. Ask them to tell you more about Jesus. And if you're local to West Norwood or Crystal Palace or Dulwich or Streatham, then you're very welcome to come and visit us at Lansdowne Evangelical Free Church, Lansdowne Hill, West Norwood, SC 27 0AR. Look us up and come and find us and you'll receive a warm welcome. But greater by far is the welcome you'll receive from Jesus Christ if you ask him now to save you. Let's pray. Father, you know each and every person who's watching this video and when they're watching it, and where they are. And I pray that you would speak, that you would give eternal life. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And finally, if you would like to contact someone from the church, then please send an email to office at lansdownchurch.org. Office at lansdownchurch.org. Lansdown Church is all one word. The Lord bless you and thank you for listening.